Hey, Rich Crest preteens, welcome to week number two of Rich Crest Academy of Discipleship, Digital Discipleship. We're so excited for tonight's study as we continue to look at this topic of reach. Before we do, join me for a special time that we call Story Time with Chase. So this is a little segment that we are calling Story Time with Chase. Now stories dominate our world and it leads us to just wanting to learn more and grow more and apply more to our life. And there was a story, you know, many of you have had time where your parents said, oh, back in the day, I went uphill both ways in the freezing cold and I was barefoot. Stories like that, that you're like, whatever, whatever. Well, listen to this story from my life that helped me understand about a few things that are important to what we're talking about. Once upon a time, there was a young, younger lad named Chase. And Chase was on a trip with some people, one specific person that you all know, and we'll just call him, obviously, Auburn. Well, while Chase was on this trip, Chase was the chaperone, the one in charge, the one that the boys loved to spend time with. And when Chase, it came time to, you know, the time where you have to take a shower and bathe and, and get yourself freshened up for worship and things like that that everyone does at all the church camps, unless you're you know, still in the fourth grade or third grade and you don't like showers. Well, Chase was taking a shower and he went into the shower and he left his clothes and his towel, you know, right outside the shower like anyone would do. Chase finishes his shower. I finish my shower. I get out of the shower, go to get out of the shower, went to grab my towel. My towel was gone. And I thought, oh, I don't know what just happened. Where's my towel? No big deal. You know, there's stuff called drip dry, so I could figure that out. Well, then I realized this. Now listen closely. As you read the story and think about the story, not only was my towel missing, but my clothes were missing as well. So I found myself in the shower, no clothes, no towel. Come to find out, yours truly, Auburn Shepherd, and a couple other guys stole my clothes stole my towel, and I was in a hard place. I was in a place where it was hard to figure out what I was about to do. But here's the deal, the moral of the story. Be careful as you think about reaching for your clothes, because if your clothes aren't there, you are in trouble. But more importantly, think about as you reach out to the people around you and how you're loving them and encouraging them, unlike Auburn and those friends loved and encouraged me in that moment. So think of that story. Stories dominate our world. Check out tonight's lesson as we think about the stories of Jesus and the parables and how he taught us clearly in the word of God through them. Welcome in preteens to our special time of teaching here. We just got done with story time with Chase and I'm glad you really enjoyed that story. But now let's look at a story even greater than that one. So everybody, grab your rad booklets, turn to session two, entitled Reach with a Story, and let's get started. So over this short time together, we're going to study Matthew 13, verses 10 through 17. Our main idea for this session is Jesus wanted people to be reached for the kingdom, and he chose to do that through telling practical stories for understanding. So we're going to go through these verses kind of point by point and read the verses uh, just so we can get our takeaways like that. So our first point comes from verse 10. Now let's read that together. Verse 10 says, Then the disciples came up and asked him, Why are you speaking to them in parables? So our first point, the disciples' important question. Here in verse 10, we, we see the disciples ask Jesus, Why are you speaking in parables? Why are you telling these stories? And the disciples really just didn't understand why Jesus would use these stories. Um, for many people, it was very unclear what he meant at the time, and they just really couldn't comprehend why he would give stories instead of really just telling them exactly what he wanted them to know. Now, point two from verses 11 through 13. Let's read those. So verse 11 says, He answered, Because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given for you to know, but it has not been given to them. For whoever has, more will be given to him. And he will have more than enough, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. That is why I speak to them in parables, because looking they do not see, and hearing they do not listen, 
or understand. See, Jesus tells the disciples that at this point in time, the secrets of heaven are for them to know. And these other people, they're really not going to get to know them just yet like the disciples were. He also states in verse 13 that he speaks to people in parables because looking they do not see and hearing they do not understand. So even though Jesus, the Messiah, is right in front of these people performing miracles, teaching, they really don't understand what's really in front of them. And then we see, if Jesus didn't speak in parables, people wouldn't really accept or or fully understand the magnitude of what he was saying just because they couldn't comprehend who he really was. Now let's move to the third point. This comes from verses 14 and 15. We see here it says in verse 14, Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous. Their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn back, and I would heal them. So here, um, ver- uh, the third point is just this, Isaiah's clear prophecy fulfilled. As we see over these points, these people don't really understand. Their hearts have grown away from the Lord And they just don't really understand what's quite in front of them and the stories that Jesus is telling. And then finally, the fourth point here in verses 16 and 17. Blessed are your eyes because they do see and your ears because they do hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see the things you see, but didn't see them. To hear the things you hear, but didn't hear them. We see here Jesus is telling them, blessed are your eyes to the disciples because you see and your and your ears because you do hear. See, many people have been waiting for this Messiah to come and for, for Jesus to come and teach them and, and learn from the Messiah. But the disciples at this point are the only ones whose eyes are really open to his teachings. The other people have been waiting for, for Jesus to come, but once Jesus came, they weren't they weren't fully ready for him. So as we reflect on this story, Um, It's easy to see. Jesus teaches us in parables. He teaches many parables. And for us, it's easy to easy to follow along. Now, really reaching into the heart and telling a story for people to understand, because otherwise they wouldn't understand the magnitude of Jesus and his coming. See, over these parables, we learn valuable lessons that that just speak to our heart because stories are so important and dear to us. Now, let's jump into a time of discussion together. Ridgecrest Preteens, thanks for taking time to study more about what it looks like to reach the people around you. As we wrap up this study, just be reminded of this main idea. Jesus wanted people to be reached for the kingdom, and He chose to do that through telling practical stories for understanding. So as you think about that main idea, Reflect on these six questions to discuss with people around you. The first one is this. What is one of your all-time favorite stories? Maybe a Netflix series, maybe a book series, or maybe a movie. I know my story from the beginning has to be one of your favorites, but pick another one. The second question. What does it look like today to live an approachable life where others feel comfortable asking you questions? Thirdly. How does it make you feel that you and I can know the secrets of the kingdom of God? The fourth question, what does the fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah show about the importance of the stories shared by Jesus? Our fifth question, how does understanding the the stories of Jesus change your life practically every day? Then lastly, our sixth question that we'll ask every single week, Who has God put in your path to reach with the gospel? Thanks again for spending this special time studying the word of God with us. And we encourage you this week to say, God, use me to be obedient to what you're leading and teaching me to do. 